Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for this installment of The Wild Stage. In the second segment of this video, I will be introducing Corinne Costell and Matthew Lorenz, and they will be performing a piece from our program, The Wild Stage, entitled Ich bin ein Femp by Misha Spoliansky. I would love to give a little bit of historical context and background to this piece so that you have some things to listen for and a little bit more to grasp onto when you see this performance. Ich bin ein Femp is from a review. A review is a much different genre than cabaret as I've been discussing in previous installments of the wild stage. Revue is much different from Cabaret, but I did include it in the programming for the Wild Stage because it was the immediate successor of the genre of literary Cabaret. Revue is much different from Cabaret in quite a few central ways. The first of which being that Revue was a much more monied endeavor. It was also a much bigger spectacle. There were much more elaborate stages, sets, costuming, and there were massive choreography numbers, and you didn't have such things in small cabaret clubs. Second of all, it was much more focused and topical than an evening at a, cab at a cabaret club. Uh, there was one theme that was the central through line at a review. There may have been vignettes and separate narratives, but again, there was one central topic or theme that was explored throughout the performance. Ich bin ein Vemp uh, is from a review entitled 100 Meter Glock by Misha Spoliansky. Spoliansky was, in fact, a house composer for the Charles Rauch Cabaret Club. However, because he was the house composer for the Charles Rauch, he was very much steeped in the aesthetics values of German cabaret. Those aesthetics and values included this sardonic wit and this immediacy and accessibility for an audience. This immediacy and accessibility is right away displayed in Ich bin ein Femp. The refrain is included in the introduction of the piece. The refrain is quite an earworm. It is very catchy and hummable. And because it is put into the introduction of the piece before the singer begins to sing, it previews the material, catches the audience's attention, and does so before the singer delivers the text, which is of utmost importance in review and cabaret. Misha Spolansky was a rather cosmopolitan composer. He was heavily influenced by American jazz and South American tango. The piece is in 2-4. It is notated as being a tango with a very strong downbeat and quite a lot of tension building in between those downbeats. And Ich bin ein Femp really does explore the empowerment of a female seducer, a trope that was not in line with societal norms. However, Spoliansky uses a tango to portray this. And what's really interesting is that a tango was commonly a symbol for male dominance and female passivity, but Spoliansky turns that around and uses a tango to portray female dominance in male passivity, which is quite witty. Another piece of sardonic wit that Spoliansky utilizes in Ich bin ein Femp is this idea of listing exploits. Another place where we hear a listing of exploits is Mozart's Don Giovanni in Leparello's catalog aria. This is quite funny because the Femp lists her own exploits. And it's even funnier because they are modern pop culture references for a 1930s Berlin audience. She lists the German Chancellor, the King of Spain, Bertolt Brecht. She says she has his cap as a souvenir, and she even says she has the beard of Hitler as a souvenir from her exploit with him. And this would have been quite humorous to an audience of this time because Hitler was a widely ridiculed and mocked public figure, and this would have been considered a jab at him. 
So Corinne Costell does a fabulous job of exploring the vulnerability and the power of this femme fatale trope. She makes her quite human. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you back here after the performance. collaborative pianist and Corinne was our amazing singer. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of our direction choices to give you just even more insight into those choices. So we had to work with the venue that our performers had in Corinne's case. She was in her apartment during this 
period of lockdown and she had different rooms at her disposal so we wanted to emulate this sense of spectacle and variety visually for an audience since Revue would have had elaborate sets, staging, and costuming. So in the first verse you see Corinne in her bathroom applying her lipstick and adoring herself. It's sort of this element, this intimate element of vulnerability. In the second verse you have her with her little black book in her bedroom. Again, it's quite intimate because she's listing these exploits indulgently, but she's listing them to herself. Um, and it's once again a nod to the catalog aria that Leparello sings in Mozart's Don Giovanni. Um, in the third verse, she is full tilt, facing the camera very seductively. It's sort of the moment that we've been waiting for for her to address the camera and seduce us as well. So. Corinne ties this inherent vulnerability, indulgence, and power together all as elements of the femme fatale. It's quite a layered approach and I think that it translates quite well to our audience. And we're hoping that this virtual presentation can portray this spirit of review and its accessibility, wit, and intimacy. I can't wait to see you for the next segment of the Wild Stage. I'll see you next time.